colors are blue and dead Like they came straight out the cemetery And I like red on the coupe Just like the heart I left way back in February Haters don't know what to do They trying to read me, but I'm not the library I don't just wanna be great Nigga, I wanna be legendary All of my hunters are blue and dead Like they came straight out the cemetery Alright y'all We done made it back after a turbulent situation, ain't we? Yeah. <laughs> Oopsies Hey it was an accident. You know what I mean? <laughs> now, we know we, we promised to get y'all this show out last week. Shit happens. Uh, we're not going to provide any information or we're not going to provide any excuses on the Raw True Show. We're just going to keep on moving forward. So, with that being said, I got my co host with me, Angie Akers and Blurry Visions, man. How y'all doing today? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? Everything's good, man. I'm glad to see y'all in good health and shit, and uh, I'm glad to be under the influence of marijuana for this show. So, we're going to hop right in. Um, mm -hmm. Angie, what do, what, what, what do we got with uh, politics today? Ain't no politics, because I'm tired of talking about it. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Jump no. off ship. Say, That's how we no. show. <laughs> no, no. Um, no, um, actually, this week, um, iconic Civil Rights Congressman uh, John Lewis actually passed away. He actually served 17 terms in Georgia's 5th Congressional District. Yeah, Street. I saw that. Yeah. That was sad, man. Yeah. 80 years old, passed from love. Did a lot of work though in the last 20, 30 years too. Just Definitely. really went hard. Definitely. What else we got? Um, I mean that's pretty much it. Just want to make sure everybody go out and vote because this is a very important Register. election. Vote because you don't vote. want Donald Trump back in office again. Oh, look at that! Look at that! Look at that! If you don't go vote, Donald Trump will be in office again. Yeah, we can't have that. All right, so. Got anything else? I know. I know we wouldn't go talk too much. Let's talk about something good that uh, happened this week. Um, I seen that. Uh, well, I consider this good during this whole coronavirus thing. Pretty much everybody I know that went back to normal and take small precautions. Um, this is what I'll say about it, man. Do your research. These things are not just happening for no reason. You know what I mean? I, I've talked with Blurry about this, Angie about this, everybody I know. There's a lot of things that don't make no fucking sense about this. Uh, the hospitals already have shown paperwork that CDC sent them asking them to label everybody COVID. And they get $13,000 for each person they label COVID. And anybody that dies who they label die from COVID, they get $33,000. These are facts. And nobody seems to wow. want to know why this is happening. That's horrible. So, yeah. Jorge Masvidal landed decent strikes in round one. Usman got a brief takedown, but Usman clearly won round two, round three, round four, and round five. He picks up a unanimous decision, 50-45 on two scorecards and 49-46 on the other. He defends his welterweight title for the second time. He's won 16 in a row. Max Holloway won round one and two versus Alex Volkanovski. Volkanovski did better in round three. Round four was close and Volkanovski took round five. One judge thought Max won the fight, but two judges thought Alex won the fight so he gets the split decision win and keeps his belt. Amanda Hibas arm bars Paige Van Zandt 221 into the contest. She showed why she was the biggest favorite on the card and a possible future title contender. Giri Prohaska scores a big second round KO over Volkan Uzdemir. We have a new contender at 205. Salakov split decisions to Santos. Amirkani chokes out Henry. Santos decisions Bogatov. Tybura decisions Grishin. Paiva decisions Zamagulov. MMA Madness. So if y'all don't know, this is one of the my favorite parts of the show. I actually had Blurry on FaceTime, Angie. This shit was pathetic. I had him on FaceTime for the fights. Look, he was... Listen, we would get halfway through the fights, and then I look, and Blurry's no longer on the screen. He hung up on me. What the fuck's wrong with you, Blurry? shit, No, I was just letting him watch the fight. And what happened was, call him back. He's got his shirt off. He says, yo... The old lady says go time, so it's go time. <laughs> fucking fights. <laughs> How did your uh, picks turn out? Uh, which one? The picks that you did for the fight. 
picks. Oh, my picks. Good shit, right? So, all right. I only was wrong on one. Remember when, when, when we had our first episode? Did I not right. say I was going to nail them shits? I might miss one. So, Alexander Volkanovs. I, I feel like that is just Dana White, bro. He don't. He want Max out. Feel like his best of his days are behind him. But now here's the here's the shit right here, right? So y'all know I went to high school with Kamar Usman. So shout out to Kamar Usman. But at the Raw Truth Show, we don't tell no motherfucking lies. I definitely bet it against my man because it's my goddamn <laughs> money. I can do what I want with it, like like Jay Whitworth. And uh, you, man, you lost it, did you? Man, he made me look like an idiot. I should have. Somebody told me you don't ever bet against get? the home team, right? Now, now, is it true that he tried to call out Conor McGregor and Conor McGregor didn't say anything? I saw uh, that. Ago. They're always calling each other back out. Everybody got Connor's, uh, it seems like they have his testicles in his mouth, man, in my opinion. Like, did, did everybody want to fight Connor's so heavy load? Fight. <laughs> yeah, heavy load. <laughs> so, the thing is, that really doesn't make no sense. I don't see why Connor would take that fight. It's too dangerous. Like, it's, it's, Connor's a 145 fighter that moved up to 155, and to go for that belt, that would be 170. And Jorge Masvidal's a big 170, but compared to Luzma, he still looks small. And Connor's smaller than both of them. So, I tell my man's Connor McGregor, just bob and weave that bullshit and take the fight you're gonna win. You know what I mean? Keep on winning. Uh, but yeah, Usman uh, pretty much kind of just picked him apart with the wrestling all night. Masvidal did, man. Ma Masvidal went out there with some dope ass shit. He tried to reenact that knee that he put on Ben Askren's forehead to send his ass in the Twilight Zone. He tried to hit that bitch. No success. Taken down, smothered. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So y'all yes. know that um, August is He's eating up large portions you hear it? of our of time the on the show. Of our time on the show. Go for it. <laughs> So you know August Alcina came out That song was fucking <laughs> came out right. about him and um Jada's approved uh, love affair. Remember how Jada tried to Yeah, hey. hey. Uh, I, I I ran into an entanglement. You see Will yeah. Smith's face, he said, What the fuck did you you ran into a relationship? Man, how, how, how is that going on? What's what's the deal with that? So that so they had a round table, which I really think was Pretty stay. She she worded that pretty good. Right. Entangle, you know, entangle. Can't get out of by any means necessary. Right. And then you? August Petty ass oh. dropped a song called Entanglement. Oh Lord. So I heard it this morning. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't understand why Rick Ross inserted himself on that song for. <laughs> yeah, they drew that huh? <laughs> Did he do it for the cloud? Yeah. I think so. You gotta hop on that. Chase on that one. That's freebie right there. It's yeah. so a free platinum think, record. So I think that. Um, I found the the correct interview. I sent it to you. You know what I'm saying? How oh, it actually yeah, should yeah, have yeah, been. Yeah, yeah. So you know, I was we're gonna let y'all check death. that out. Yeah. <laughs> yes. We're gonna we're actually that. gonna check play that, that here in just a second. Yeah. All right. So we got anything else on rumor report? Uh, also on the. Um, y'all ain't here yet. The rumor report. Who got report. shot? This this. Who got shot? Who did? Y'all know. know. Maggie yeah. Stallion got Man, shot. Man, she got her. I heard she got her feet stomped on with a bullet. By Tory, <laughs> Tory Lanez. That's the word. That's, hey, that's the, the word. word. That shit's crazy, bro. I was thinking about that. I'm like, yo, because nobody will talk. Nobody's saying shit. At least everybody's keeping pretty tight lipped about it. Meg Thee Stallion have not come out and just said, hey, yo, this motherfucker shot right. the shit out of my ass. So shout out to Meg Thee Stallion for not for not six nine in it, man. Hell is Our favorite part of of the Raw Truth Show here. Am I lying, Blurry? Holy shit. Who do we got in the building, man? I want you to introduce yourself. Me. I'm Doug. Big Doug. Big Doug. <laughs> Big Doug. So, proper grammar. Y'all know we're here for proper Doug. grammar, man. This segment right here is something that we play around with. Um, <laughs> music house supposed to be, man, in a proper sense. Today we're going to talk about Juicy J's Zip in a Double Cup. Now, here's the original <laughs> lyrics, D. Okay. Don't Zip block bag full of kush. Double cup full of drink. I get so damn trippy in my mind, I go blank. The top 10 get high rappers, number one is my rank. You say no to drugs, Juicy J can't. Today I'm drinking white, tomorrow brown. I'm not a boxer, but I'll do some rounds. With your girl, I'm gonna spoon her in the hotel room, and if she ain't trying to fuck, I'm looking for that runner up. D, can I please get some proper grammar on that? You sure can, Mr. Truth. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Inside a Ziploc bag, I happen to have an expensive marijuana strain. 
and my double styrofoam cup is filled to the brim with a promethazine coating cough syrup. I get to a point where I'm under the influence so much that it's safe to say my mind goes blank. Bye. <laughs> Out of the top 10 rappers who dialogue about marijuana, I rank in first place. First. While most people say no to drugs, I myself, Juicy J, cannot. Today I'm choosing to drink a white liquor, thus saving the brown liquor for tomorrow's activities. <laughs> I don't happen to be a skilled boxer, however. That doesn't mean I will not defend myself if threatened. I will more than likely at least cuddle with your significant other inside of my bedroom, hotel bedroom, I'm sorry. Oh my God. But if she is not willing to participate in consensual sex, Ooh. I will be diligently searching for her replacement. And there's a proper grammar. <laughs>
I didn't think it was gonna do that. And I, I, I just, I just went and did what I wanted to to them songs, to them beats. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I know he could get it on the radio because he got K Rock on the radio, so right. But uh, I really, you know, just not even that confident then, and didn't know how they were gonna take to it. Didn't know if they even gonna like it or nothing like that. I just knew I did me on now. And uh, Kevin, they brought, brought that out of me. And we talked a little bit about that in, in our previous interview with you. Kevin A seems to be like somebody that really got you, got you, got your feet moving in the right way, right? Yeah, he taught he taught me how to do all all this. I was already doing, I was already writing sixteen balls on the dot. Like when I wrote it was sixteen balls on the dot. That was just memorizing verses from other people and just mimicking the time. I guess I just had it directly right, but I never knew it was bars. I never knew yeah. what bars were. I never knew you counted them. I never ain't no 16 in them. He showed me how to do all that. He showed me how to record, and, you know what I'm saying? So he gave me that edge on all that. You know what was a funny thing? Way late into my career, I still did not know how to count bars. What I would do is I would listen for the transition where 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 the orchestral shit started popping. I said, well, that must be like the hood. Folk, uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, once you started getting going um, with the Crook for Life and, and all that blew up, we, we was talking about the same album, the, the Rippler. Yeah. Um, Blurry, I want you to talk to talk to Pookie about that. What questions do you have so about that the song? Rippler. Yeah, that was kind of you know explaining you, correct? Yeah. Okay, so I, I did get it correct when I was analyzing that. Yeah. Yeah, so. it was like. Uh, my anger modes, like, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? One, two, three. Like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? The three different levels of sh it's, it's, it's gonna get that mode. That's why I said mode three. Like, one, mode one, mode two, mode right, three. Right, right. A couple people that I talked to about, boy, you said mode three name long time ago. <laughs> <Come on. laughs> I said, nah, like, man, that shit is literally impossible. Mode three. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that, good kids, though. That's a good kids. Yeah. <laughs> so, moving on. Uh, the Return of the Rippler. So I listened to this album again last week. It's been a couple years since I listened to this specific one. You know I keep you in my tape deck, man. So just spinning that one back, man, that one was fun to listen to because I always kind of looked at that one as like the one album that just seemed out of place. It was just, to me, it sounded different than everything else, but in a good way. You know what I mean? It was just... I don't know, like, my favorite song on there was Payback, bro. Like, easily, I love that song. And I really like, I like how you you stay quiet a lot of times. Like, I, I see online and stuff, there be small haters. Like, people don't realize, man, even when you on, on Pook's level, bro, and, and I've known Pook for a long time, man, cool as fuck, bro. Like, for real, he do shit for people he do not have to do. And uh, thank God, man, he still does, man, because a lot of y'all wouldn't even be here. Shouts out to my man, Kokomo. Uh, shout out, shout I want to make sure I show big love to Kokomo. So me and Kokomo go way back, right? I think Kokomo introduced me to you. It was at, in Dallas. It might have been at like, oh, man, I forgot where the first time it was. I remember I was wearing a, a, a brown thermal, and you was wearing a red Crook for Life shirt. I still got that picture, but shouts out to Kokomo, man. Yeah, real top first artist on Stone Crook Records. So what do you got coming out with Kokomo? I want to just interrupt right there. Uh, where, where, what are y'all looking to do for Kokomo this year? What can we expect? You know, Kokomo's so self-sufficient on his own, everything he do. Like it's just, it's all on him. And what, what his right. vision is. Yeah. What he want to, what he want to do with it. You know what I'm saying? So we, we just always start backing him up on everything he want to do. It's crazy because as long as I know Kokomo, man, like whenever he started fucking with you at first. Um, he just told me he was attracted to the realness, bro. He's like, man, that dude there is so down to earth for no reason. He's a fucking icon. He don't have to fucking kiss nobody ass at all. Motherfuckers should be lining up to kiss his ass. But nah, he out here helping the next generation. So definitely instrumental, bro. Like, meeting you, bro, showed me, whenever we kind of got cool, bro, it showed me, bro, that I belong. In, that, in those kind of circles, and it really, it's got two yeah. it really got me yeah, going, bro. So I really appreciate that, man. Now we're gonna keep moving on, though. On uh, now, I want you to tell the story about the the word ventation. Ventation of the crook uh, of of a crook was the album. 
I looked this, look y'all, I looked up the fucking meaning of this bitch and could not find it. I felt stupid because when I first seen it, I was like, man, I don't know what the fuck that means. And then I started looking it up. There is no um, definition for it. This is a word you made up, correct? I, I made it up, man. It was, uh, and, and it was just about me venting, you know what I'm saying? That, it, that was at a time of... I feel like I need to get some things out of my chest. I was feeling shit, you know what I'm saying? Things was kind of going sideways with friends and then I was just seeing shit. So I was just was kind of speaking on it a little bit but before that happened, which kind of done, I done done a few more times. Right. And uh, it ended up, man, that's my favorite album, actually. That I, I that's that's my that that's that's, my, that's in my top two, bro. Like that's my favorite solo album I did. Let me tell you something, right? So, let me tell you my favorite song in that album is, bro. Motherfucking Undisputed, bro. God damn, bro. That shit, man, I, I done listened to that shit at least three or four times. When I get up in the morning, I get up early, man. I'm on a move at like 5.30, 5.45. And I, I'll drive down the highway and I'll throw that bitch on, bro. And it don't matter how the fuck I was feeling before. When I listen to that bitch, I feel the overwhelming need to shit on my haters, bro. So... I appreciate yeah. you for that song. I want you to tell me about that song, man. I, I heard a lot of. It seemed like you had a lot of personal shit going on on that song. Uh, what was going on? What, what What are you willing to talk about on that? It was. It was. It was really just anger, bro. You know, really, and 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 uh, and me. That's 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 probably the, the most boastful as you would catch me. That's what I liked about like, it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like was, that one was seriously it was being, aggressive. It was me being boastful. And and Pookie, you know how I am with my music is, which is right into I'm I'm, I'm I'm ripping, I'm I'm going, I'm attacking it, you know what I'm saying? So I just and that's how that's how I did that. You know, just, and I want to jump into something, y'all. Now listen. So I already knew this shit, but y'all need to really go and look at the 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 sound scans. This is the king of Dallas. You know what I mean? So. He's not going to say it, but I'm going to say it, and there's hundreds of people that feel like me. That's why I'm glad that you keep it going, bro. I've looked it up, too, bro. Nobody has sold more physical copies in North Texas, really, than you. Like, on SoundScan, nope. this was the guy. This shit was flying out of shit like crack. You, you never saw anything like this before. Yeah. Nemesis couldn't do this. Uh, certain people after you couldn't do this. So how did you... When did I was independent. All independently, so you've 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 been in the zone where you had a pop chunk of these CDs too. Yeah. So you know what it's like for some of these artists. Well, artists like me, I kind of feel like I'm more the last generation that actually did that before digital happened. Yeah, able, able to catch it. How hard was this whole shit for you to actually get to that point where you like probably got people out of state calling you like, yo, that quick for life is fucking spinning on the radio station up here, dog. Hey, then. When, when we was doing Crew for Life on my album and Lucha album, like we we didn't do no uh, having in a trunk, nothing. It, everything was in the store. It was it was it was my pa first. All my pa? Yeah, all my pa first, and then uh, but uh, Kevin A had his his connections with the chain stores like Music Warehouse and right. Sam Goody. Then. Sam Goody, you know shout out to Sam Goody. Goody's and, uh, not existing ass no more, man. Yeah, I miss know, Sam Goody. Yeah, Mom Paws did real good then. Like Mr. Blue, Side Dallas, that's legendary. Right. You know, if you're really fun for him, y'all would not have seen my album be nothing like that. Like, I tell people all the time, it's crazy how the universe works, right? It could be one fucking component missing real time. And, a, and an icon's story, and there's no fucking icon. Like, real time, bro. that shit really be getting to me sometimes. I mean, one false move, and it wouldn't like, be Mr. Pookie. Picture uh, leaving Kevin A. Going out to do our own thing, going back out on the road, pressing up the CDs. Now we back. Now we in the truck, doing the hard work. Yeah. Now we doing that, and going going around trying to put our CDs in the stores, and go we go to Mr. Blues, trying to put CDs, trying to get him our new stuff, and he come and break me down the whole process of something I didn't even know that trap. Which I remember. Him kid was saying something about him, but I never knew the money he put up, he put my album out there even more, and it was just crazy, bro. Like, if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't, y'all wouldn't have seen no more of 
it, it's crazy that you say you know that, right? Saying, like, I, I was going to tell you this story, right? Um, I didn't want to get too deep into it, but I wanted your thoughts on this, right? So, I'm not saying no names, but I had a certain situation with this show. I believe in this show. I'm making the moves to make the show happen. A big-ass roadblock happens. I decide to carry on with the show. This, this is the word, y'all. Perseverance, right? I, I've watched you, bro, over the years have the same type of perseverance that I see in myself. Um, I feel like, man, like just on on a more bigger bigger thing, everybody should be paying homage to you. But I come from that cloth where you pay that homage. It don't seem like the the next generation is willing to do that, right? How do you feel about that? You know what? Uh, uh... Dallas for a word, and, and, and really all over, you know what I'm saying? Everywhere, everywhere I done went out of state to do my, my shows and they react to me, they, they, they let me know. But Dallas for a word let me know, the streets let me know every day. Every day I'm out, they let me know every time they see me, every time they see me. So if they don't, and, and they, 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 some of them just don't. But in the presence of other people, they got to. They had to, bro. It's too, it's too much. It's gonna be too saying. many people that's gonna be like, man, I know you're not hating on Mr. Pookie exactly right now, are you? Gonna, exactly what's gonna, how it's gonna <laughs> yeah. play out. I mean, listen, you got motherfuckers, man, like, like I said, I'm just one person. But just the experience, the interactions that we've had together, I, I, I went on your Crook for Life tour with you. Just because you happen to be going to San Antonio, and I'll be on down there, hardcore, right? So. Just going out there, man, and seeing people in San Antonio. I mean, the way that people would look at him in that crowd, y'all, listen, this shit's important. Because if you want to get to that level right there, and I've been doing this shit for 15 years straight. Pookie been doing it damn near double what I've been 22. doing. 22 years, you know what I'm saying? So for y'all that really are trying to get to the next level, the most important thing, in my opinion, would be to try to stay as humble as you can, but defend yourself if people come at you. Right for you, rap for them. Y'all heard it first here, man. The Raw Truth Show, season one, episode season one. one. Mr. Episode motherfucking one. Pookie, the icon, Pookie. the legend. Put some motherfucking respect on my nigga name. Hey, man. Are blue and dead, like they came straight out the cemetery. And I like red on the coupe, just like the heart I left way back in February. Haters don't know what to do, they try to read me, but I'm at the library. I don't just wanna be great.